Many analysts propose that we are nearing a global economic collapse, but today I will discuss these 11 charts which prove that this is actually worse than during the financial crisis. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We're going to get into these charts today. They're all directly from the Federal Reserve's website. And this is very serious information because as long as the stock market is increasing, nobody wants to look at the real indicators. So these are a whole bunch of them. And we're going to begin with the total public debt. Now you need to understand that 1970 here for the charts that go that far back is very important because in 1971 Nixon pulled the world off the gold standard. At that point the amount of debt that had been accumulated begins to go exponential and you can see that for every period it's getting worse and worse particularly from the year 2000 things have gotten really bad since then and the debt has been uh, obviously accumulating you can see how this is not just the federal reserves balance sheet adding up you can see this on the national level we can see cities that have gone bankrupt we can see individuals claiming bankruptcy everything here happens to get worse as time goes on not better and this right here all sectors credit market instruments liability level this is going to show you that these so-called financial instruments are just getting more and more pervasive they're finding their way into everything and guess what the pension funds that people are relying on are all connected in with these leveraged so-called assets or investments and this is a terrible thing for the future what in the world do you think is going to happen when you allow this to expand whether it's something that they consider safe or not i have my own views on that the fact remains is that this type of investment when the pension funds when people's retirement accounts are essentially all focused around things that i believe are risky we're going to run into a big problem in the future that's for sure now look at this this is frightening to me the velocity of m2 money stock and this is a, essentially a calculation of the total money in this currency supply and you can read up further on m2 if you want but this is essentially the amount of money that's out there and you can see the velocity which is very important because remember currency the root word there is current and it needs to have a current it needs to be flowing in order for it to be working it can't just sit under your mattress the government hates that the financial institutions hate that the central banks hate that they do not want it under the mattress they want it to be consistently being spent loaned out given out and it needs to be constantly constantly trading hands but look what happened approximately year 2000 and especially since the financial crisis the velocity has gone down to rates hasn't been seen in a very long time so this right here is extremely serious news let's go into this home ownership rate for the united states something that i've talked about very often of course you had a terrible scenario only a few years ago where the subprime mortgages, all of those silly loans that were given out to people who could never afford them, allowed for much more people to get out of their rental properties and get into a subprime type uh, mortgage. And this allowed many people who could never afford these buying five homes. And here they are the home ownership rate declining at a rapid level ever since the peak there and going down to levels not seen in decades so this is going to show you that a strong nation could very well use this increased home ownership rates we know that you know obviously with the uh, workers that work in the industry and the commodities that are involved building houses is definitely a good thing but here we have it, a declining number that doesn't seem to be turning up anytime soon, particularly when we have this glut of homes. Civilian employment population ratio. And despite the fact that over the last couple years, it has 
begun to accelerate, it really has declined significantly during the financial crisis. This is something that I've been noting over and over again, where people are not finding the amount of work that they did, and we're looking at decades old, uh, uh, really, uh, the statistics here are showing and showing up back from a few decades ago. It's incredible that they have not been able to solve this yet. And of course, because the policies are designed intentionally that way. Civilian labor force participation rate. This is a key indicator, once again, going back uh, decades old right here. And this is the actual amount of people that are employed. See, you look at the unemployment rate, completely fraudulent. They're looking at numbers that are less than 6%. Well, I just cannot agree with that, particularly when you use a real indicator like the civilian labor force participation rate, a very good indicator of what exactly is going on in terms of the employment scenario. I'll move on here. Inactivity rate, 25 to 54 males for the United States. Look at this number increasing consistently for the past few decades, primarily since the financial crisis. Remember, everything increases in an exponential rate recently, and they're not able to keep up. They're simply able to cover up in a few instances. This right here, very, very important to look at. The unemployment rate, the real unemployment rate, has been increasing. People are no longer able to find jobs at the rate they could before. And this here is the real median household income in the United States. Once again, declining way past the financial crisis that we had and going into levels that are absolutely terrible right now. And this is something that we need to understand that these numbers that we're facing are it's something that they can't grow out of when there's no growth, especially how are they ever going to get out of this mess, real median household income before it wasn't that long ago, in fact, and many commenters on here have talked about this before, how in, for example, in 1970, you had people that could support a household of people on one income alone. And now two people in the household working struggle to make the payments. Things have changed, and this is the indicator that I watch for. Consumer Price Index, or the CPI, for all urban consumers, food and beverages. So while the Federal Reserve says that things haven't been increasing, inflation is too low, and all of this business, the CPI, when you actually include food here, is consistently going up. Food prices have been rising every single month, every year, and that is real inflation, not the numbers that they talk about. Government social benefits. We're talking about the SNAP program or the food stamp program. Look at how unbelievably dramatic the rise during this financial crisis. And now they look at the numbers and they really ignore the SNAP program altogether, of course, when they're bringing out their unemployment rates and all of this silliness. Here we have the SNAP program increasing at such an alarming rate. You're looking at nearly 47 million people in the United States on this program. It is consistently getting bigger all of the time and this is a rate that is absolutely dramatic just to think about we're looking at such a large percentage of the population can't afford to eat what does that say about the crisis itself now this here is from my book but i'm using these statistics from the st louis fed showing you the 30-year mortgage rate a number that is declining every single year for decades now 
And this allows people to continue to buy homes. You can see that in certain areas around the world, they're offering the negative mortgage rate. That's how desperate they are to keep this propped up. And it's not just the mortgage rates. Look at all interest rates downward. People are able to borrow money at 0% if you're a banker or really low rates right now if you're able to get that to buy a home or perhaps buy a car or any other thing that you wish, the money is being given away at extremely low rates. All of these indicators that I've been talking about today are the real indicators of an economy. If they're doing well, the nation will do well, but we have seen quite the opposite here today. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I want to do more videos like this. I'm trying to do all different types of videos just to keep things interesting, but I want to keep it, of course, focused here. And I hope you guys appreciate that. I'm always looking forward to the, the comments. I try to reply to as many as I can. I generally now only... Um, reply to the comments on that day's video because there simply isn't enough time. I'm really trying to dig in deep into uh, the videos and try to get more information to come out. I have so many things going on behind the scenes that I'm working on as well. I hope you will all appreciate that too. And last but not least, don't forget to become an insider. It's where I give out all my best intel for free, and it is available at themoneygps.com. All you have to do is scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.